right underneath here, we're gonna make that connection like I showed before. This is going to go into the blood outlet. And then once you do that, the clean blue mat is all set up. So I'm actually gonna grab some gloves because we're gonna start lubricating everything up. So uh, occiput anterior and occiput posterior uh, type of baby positions during delivery. And then you also have the breech delivery puck, which is, as it, as it sounds, is mainly just for breech deliveries. Um, and then you have the advanced PPA uterus, which we'll go into later, that has to do with the, uh, the postpartum hemorrhage. Right, so I'm gonna get the pucks out so you can see what they look like. Clamps are actually where the deliverable baby hooks into from the hip, the hip joint. We'll kind of see how that works here in a second. When we're installing the pucks, you want to have the belly skin off. And you'll notice here, this is the actual track that the puck kind of goes down. Um, notice the, the try not to get try not to get lubricant or water near these pins. If it gets on other parts of the uh, delivery puck, it's not the end of the world and it's it's okay. Mainly, we're just focused on these pins not receiving any fluid contact. When we're putting this in, we're going to have this face down. This slides in. You should hear that click. Okay. So I'm going to get the baby and the regular, both the baby and placenta are going to have this umbilical cord. Additionally, in the install, you get five cuttable umbilical cords. Um, those cuttable umbilical cords can also be filled with fluid as well. So if you want to simulate like the, the, the fluid and the umbilical cord secreting as well when, you, when someone eventually cuts it, you can do that. So I'm going to set this right there for now, and then let me get the lubricant. Here we go. About our new lubricant with the Mama Anne as opposed to the Sim Mom is it lasts quite a bit longer. Um, you still want to make sure that when you're setting up the deliveries that you use a decent amount of lubricant. More, if you're going to fail one way or the other, it's better to have more lubricant than not enough. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start by lubricating the delivery module. So you'll notice there's a cavity kind of towards the bottom. This is what we call our placenta pocket. So when we're loading the baby in the ADS, the placenta is actually going to go into this pocket first. And that's towards the end of the delivery when the placenta is delivered, that's where it's going to be coming out of. All right, so we're going to kind of lubricate up the perineum, some of the other areas. You can also lubricate this uh, scoop. This, like I said, that's where the legs will sit. Actually for testing right now, I'm just going to, this is, can rotate. So I'm actually going to move that to the bottom. Just makes it a little bit easier for the baby to be loaded. Um, and yeah, so I'm going to get some the baby. So we have the baby right here. Let's see more real quick. About a quarter size at a time, I'd say, is a pretty reasonable amount. How? About a quarter uh, in your hand, but okay. or the size of a quarter, just so that it doesn't you don't like waste any lube from being run off in your hands or. Mm -hmm. Anything like that. We'll lubricate the placenta itself. And like I said, you still want to use a lot of lubricant or, or a decent amount, but you shouldn't have to reapply nearly as much as you did with our Simmom solution. Okay. All right. Should be good. So we'll start by inserting the placenta pocket. This just goes in like so. Fits in the bottom here. Once the placenta is in, we're gonna fit as much of the umbilical cord in there as possible as well. Again, it doesn't have to be all of it. You can also, if you're gonna do uh, any kind of um, like the umbilical cord wrapping around the baby, you can do that as well. That won't affect the delivery. It'd be something that the students would examine when the baby's being delivered. So now I just want to go head first for the delivery or for setting up. We're going to cross these arms as best as we can. And this is that where the clamp actually attaches, like I was describing before. Your, your legs are going to tuck into that scoop that we saw earlier on the cephalic delivery module. And then you should see that that locks in like so. And again, we're just going to tuck that in as best we can. Loop up the back, and then we'll put the belly module back on, and we should be good to go. And for the belly module back on, hold on, there we go, okay. We'll turn the mannequin back on, and I'm going to have you get that laptop real quick. 
you're going to go to Leap Simulation Home, which is right there. <coughs> that call is letting you know that she's powered on and is able to connect to her application up in the upper left hand corner. Okay. When this first loads up, it's going to ask us to connect to the mannequin. I should say that the wireless is connected to that Mom Ann router. I renamed your mannequin Santa Barbara City College Mom Ann, so you can go ahead and click on that. Again, if that makes noises, that's okay. That's just the system initializing. Um, so you're going to hit manual mode. So go into the voice conference application actually real quick. We're going to mute that. That's just if you have the mannequin set up in a control room, kind of like you guys have. That's the conferencing application to talk through the mannequin um, to the students. So don't click out of that. Just go, just go back to the, yeah, that works. All right, we're going to hit manual mode. That's for testing. Um, so one thing to note, we, have, we see the uh, themes here. This is basically going to be the, the basic setup for the patient information as well as the default vitals that will show when the sessions have the baby set up in OA. You're gonna do an OA cephalic delivery. Left click. So just try to hit the kind of there you go, the left side of the trackpad. Um, it's gonna ask, it's gonna tell us you have the cephalic delivery puck installed correctly. We do, the baby's loaded. We're gonna say yes, we confirm the installation. That puck is going to go through its initial calibration while we're you kind of heard that motor. That's just the cephalic delivery module getting in the right right uh, rotation. Um, here we have options to uh, set up how much blood we have in either the internal or external blood reservoirs. In this case, I've uh, filled it up with the isopropyl beforehand, and we should update the volume to about 400 milliliters. So we're going to go ahead and hit that. Update volume. Because it's usually used with the external blood reservoir, the two presets are pretty high, so we're going to hit custom and then enter 400 milliliters. Okay, and then you can also add EFM, EFM history if you'd like, but we're going to go ahead and just jump to start session. And now we're in. So the last step we'll need to do, and again, this is only for manual mode. If you had a scenario, a pre built scenario that you were programming things into, you wouldn't have to do this. The delivery would already be set up. But we're going to go into that bottom button there, bottom right hand corner where it says set up delivery. It's very similar to our sim mom setup just with a couple key differences. So up in the upper left hand you have that drop down menu for a couple presets. When I've tested the mom and units that I've had so far, typically time it still has realistic proper stages for uh, birth. So we're going to go ahead and under that drop down menu go from custom. We're going to change it to 10 uh, contractions every 10 minutes. Okay, that's going to change the, uh, the actual contraction length, how often the contractions happen, and the intensity to those preset values. Um, you also have the ability with this new setup screen to set up uh, contraction sounds. So similar to what you'd have in the vocal bank, which is in the sounds panel of Leap, you're also going to have that here. The pushing long sound is, is pretty standard for, for you know, normal contractions. The only other thing we'll need to check on this is on the right there, you'll see that the sounds have been muted. We're going to actually go ahead and turn those on. So you're going to hit the mute um, icon right there. That's to turn the pushing sounds on, but you can also run the delivery without any moans or, or anything mm. like that. Okay. Um, and then under complications, we're actually the last thing we'll do is we'll set up the shoulder dystocia. So you're going to hit uh, from there. We're going to do shoulder dystocia. And then you notice too, when we change that, it went into the stages and added a shoulder dystocia complication. And we'll get to that later in the delivery. Um, it'll ask us to, do, uh, to apply superficial pressure. And once we do that, it'll allow us to actually resolve the shoulder dystocia. But it's, it's kind of a little different from SimMom because it's more of an, a stage-based setup. So it's not necessarily a strict timeline, but just more, you know, obviously the pushing contractions and crowning and taking you through what you normally see in a OA delivery, All right? So we're, we'll keep it three minutes and we can actually go ahead and just activate delivery. Now it'll take a sec before the first contraction happens, but when it does, the mannequin will groan out in a pushing sound. That's not
we can start to see the baby begin the crowning process. I need to take, I'll take a look at that at the end. That shouldn't be, it is latched. That's why it's able to get those features to work, but it's a little loose with letting a, too, a little too much of that air out. Again, it doesn't, it's not, let me see if the, because you can also do fetal, fetal uh, pulse contract, uh, feel the fetal pulse contractions as well, or um, yeah, format sensor there. So I'll take a look at that once we're done. I may not have latched that super securely, but for the purpose of the delivery, we should be okay. The main thing too with the delivery system is, uh, so on the delivery system, there is a, it's a different kind of motor that actually pushes the baby down the track. So with our Simom solution, we had a pneumatic uh, drive, uh, which was that kind of uh, accordion bell kind of looking thing. I know you had uh, Victoria Noel. or Noel, so you may not be aware of it. But this one is using what's called a linear drive assembly. If you've ever seen like a vending machine that has, you know, candy bars or chips and you put in your money and then the coil kind of turns, mm -hmm. that's exactly how that puck is getting down the track. There's these two very long coils. A motor will actually turn those coils and that... Uh, place where we inserted the cephalic delivery puck, uh, that's what's causing that to go down. And the reason why I mention that is because the belly module needs to be installed for any deliveries or anything to work um, because that, line, that linear drive assembly that causes the delivery to happen, if you were to say get your fingers in between that as the baby's going down, that linear drive assembly does not stop for any resistance. So it's literally... It's mainly a safety thing because, again, if you have the belly module off and you're doing an active delivery, you, you know. Um, but just so you know, it will not allow you to perform a delivery unless it detects that something is connected to that top section of the belly module. Now, that that pumping air noise is, would not be happening generally. It sh it shouldn't be happening. It's it seems like, uh, like so that, I won't I won't hear that during. No. no. And actually, I, I don't know that I'm even able to feel. Hold on. I just may not have secured it properly. It's still detecting the belly modules on, therefore it was able to do the, the actual delivery, but I just may not have latched that all the way down before, so I apologize about that. But we'll take a look at that once mm -hmm. we're done with this guy. But no, it should not be leaking that much air. I don't know if it's leaking, but it's you know just louder than expected. So, here's the head being delivered. And as it's going into that shoulder to social complication, we'll see kind of the baby's body turn. That's from the cephalic delivery module actually performing that rotation. And we're actually gonna start seeing some turtling. So the baby's actually gonna go back into a little subtle, but I have the leg kind of positioned weird, so it may not be super easy to see, but. All right, so we have a shoulder to social complication. The baby's head is turned or rotated. So what we'll do is we're actually going to apply super poopy pressure. So on the super poopy pressure sensor on either side, you have, yeah, I don't think the belly is connected because even th this was working earlier and yeah. So, okay, so because we don't have the belly module on properly, and, and I apologize, I should have double checked that when I put it on, but the super poopy pressure sensor isn't going to activate or detect that we're applying that. So we can actually go ahead and hit now, if I try to deliver the baby right now, it's locked. It's not going to come out until we hit resolve shoulder dystocia. The shoulder dystocia is resolved. And we can actually deliver the rest of the baby. So we'll kind of, again, aid the shoulder in being delivered. The baby will come out. We're going to rest baby on mom. And then you're going to go ahead and hit confirm baby delivered. And again, those buttons that pop up to confirm each event, that would, wouldn't would be there if you had an automatic scenario that would just go through the stages depending on what you have set up. Um, one thing to note too about the placenta being delivered, so that delivery module underneath the belly, belly module or the belly skin, um, that won't, the, the placenta won't, you can't pull the placenta out quite yet until that delivery module moves back up in the mannequin. So, because what happens is as the cephalic delivery module is pushing the baby down, 
it kind of covers. Remember when we saw that placenta pocket? It kind of mm-hmm. covers that mm-hmm. placenta pocket a little bit. Yeah. So it'll say, you know, uh, baby delivered, cephalic delivery module moving back. Um, because it's not giving us that message anymore, that tells us, okay, the placenta is deliverable, meaning it's not covered by the cephalic delivery puck. We can present the placenta as well. Okay, we'll go ahead and hit complete. 